Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to another week. I hope you've had a good one. I want to talk to you this week about something that I see a lot people ask me about and I see forums about it online on social media and other things um, and we all know the problems with it and that is latency. It's that moment of silence in between when you strike the drum and the sound being heard. There, it's like a flam. That's one way of looking at it. You strike the drum here and the sound comes out here. And it's that tiny little bit of silence just in there. That's latency. You know? Now, it's different for everyone depending on the system that you're using. And it only really starts to happen when you incorporate a computer into your setup. I remember back in the day, latency, I hadn't even heard it. I didn't even know what the, what the, what the term meant. You start using computers, all of a sudden latency becomes an issue. So there are some things that you can do to, uh, to eliminate latency. So let's start at the beginning. First of all, your computer, what you're using. It needs to have a fast processor. It needs a lot of RAM. Um, the less RAM you have and the smaller the processor power of the computer, uh, it's going to struggle. It's going to find it hard to process the information, hence why the processor needs to be fast. Um, the same with the RAM as well, random access memory. A lot of the data that you're using is going to go into that memory. That's something you really want to look at, first of all. Um, secondly, once you have your system that you're happy with and you feel is fast enough for what you want it to do, uh, make sure that you have as much turned off as possible. You don't have to get rid of anything, but make sure you don't have any programs running in the background. Um, also make sure you're not on the internet if you don't need to be on the internet. Um, all these things help once again to put less strain on your computer and that's something that you've really got to eliminate and get down to a bare minimum. So go through and have a look at the, the tasks that are running in the background and make sure that anything you can is switched off. You don't have to delete anything, but just make sure it's all switched off. Then once you have your software, your, your DAW that you're using, whether it be Logic, Pro Tools, Cubase, uh, again, I use Ableton. I use Logic as well, but for this um, uh, electronic drum wise, I always use Ableton because it's so good. When you use Ableton, there's a few things that you can also do to make sure that your, uh, that, that your program is going to be working as efficiently as possible. The first thing is you have an in-out, in the audio preferences, you have an in-out um, devices to choose from and you can configure those in-out devices. If on the inputs you've got all your channels open, if you've got a, a device where you can record, I don't know, 24 channels, if you've got a device where you can record eight channels, and you've got all those eight channels open, but you're not recording any channels, switch it off. There's no point in having it on. Again, if you've got it open and you've got those channels on, more processing power is being used. So make sure all of those are switched off. As for outputs, only have the outputs on that you need. So if you're only using stereo outputs, switch all the other outputs off. Again, it's it's putting strain on the uh, processor if you don't. If you've got software running on channels and you're not using that software, you've got it switched off, I'd advise you not to keep it there. I'd advise you to, to delete it or if you'd like to try it out later on, save it. Save what you've done for that preset if you've done anything to it at all. Save it so you can come back and load it up again at a later date. But don't have it sitting there doing nothing because again, it's putting strain on the processor. So bearing all these things in mind, you should be able to eliminate a lot of the problems. It's not going to get down to, it's not going to get down to zero latency by doing that, but you're going to be putting less strain on your processor. And in doing so, that will allow the speed of the processing to be as good as it can be. The next thing we need to look at is obviously the latency within the program itself. And that comes down to buffer size and the sample rate. The sample rate 44.1 or 44,100 kilohertz, that's the sample rate that's used for CD quality. It's probably the minimal sample rate you should use for a good sound quality. 
If you're using a sample rate of 196, that's going to put a lot of strain on your processing power. The next thing to look at is the buffer size. Now, the buffer size is really important, and this is where the latency disappears, and I'm going to demonstrate. Over here, if you go over to your preferences, the buffer size at the moment is 1024. And you can hear, you can hear the flam. I'm hitting the drum and then the sound is happening. Okay, if I start bringing that sample rate down, I'm going to bring it down to 512. So it comes down in halves. It's getting tighter. I'm going to bring it down again. This is down to 256. Now you probably can't hear that or it's quite hard to hear the difference, but you can feel it. I can feel it when I'm hitting that and the sound coming out. There's a slight delay. So I'm going to go down again to 128. And now we're getting close. Now we're getting really close to it feeling natural. So when you're playing, that's down to 64. That's nice. At 64, 32. 32 is, is, you know, it's good as well, but you're never going to be able to do a gig with, uh, with the buffer size at 32 if you're running a, a big set within Ableton. In fact, there you go, 32. You can hear it breaking up. So there's absolutely no way that you can run a, a, a set at 32 samples. All I've got here is the 808 core kit um, running in Ableton. This is a fast machine, um, but no chance. So we're going to go back to 64 samples. So there you go. Now, sometimes you can do all this, but if you've got in your room, if you're monitoring um, through speakers, uh, sometimes the crossovers in your speakers, if you've got a speaker setup that is, that is using crossovers, sometimes even that can cause latency. So in your, you're playing and you're thinking, this feels really cool, but you're coming out the speakers, you can hear latency and you've got everything down here. So you, you need to check your speakers as well and make sure your speakers um, don't have some kind of crossover in there that is causing some kind of delay. I've had that. We were rehearsing and we were monitoring through the speakers, the PA system, and, uh, and there was de a, a delay coming and it was down to the crossovers and it took us a while to figure it out. Um, and you think it's your system and you're pulling it apart and you're thinking, but I've done everything I can. Um, yeah, so you need to check everything. And every system is different. You know, what works for, for one system may not work for another. What works for, you, for me may not work for you. But these are the points I'm pointing out here that I think you should go and check if you're having latency issues. Um, once you get it down, it's, obviously it's great. Um, so yeah, so there you go. That's latency for you. I hope that's given you a little insight into how you can uh, optimize your setup the best you can so the kit responds to the best way uh, to your playing that it can as well. If you've got any questions, please don't uh, hesitate to get them over. I hope you've enjoyed the video once again. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. If you're on Facebook, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos, they're here on Facebook or they're over here on YouTube, depending on where you're watching this. Um, yeah, have a great week, guys, and I will see you next time for another rendition of How the Do I Do That? Take it easy, have a great week, and I will see you later. Bye.